So there's this new movie that came out on Netflix called Leave the World Behind. And the only reason I watched it was because I saw this clip on Instagram of all these Teslas attacking Julia Roberts and Ethan Hawke. And I'm like, you had me at Ethan Hawke. And then we even get a little bit of Kevin Bacon also. <laughs> Fuck me now. But no actor in the world, not even your favorite one, could save this movie from its horrendous ending. When I tell you I was about to bust, this movie had me on the verge of busting with anticipation, all for them to falcon kick me in my fucking balls with how they ended the movie. And this has only happened one other time for me, and that was when I watched the movie Skyline. But this movie's ending makes Skylines look like Inceptions. I'm honestly still mad at how this movie ended. And as you're about to see, I went the extra mile just to try and understand what was going on because I was that invested to get my bust on. So the movie starts out with Amanda and Clay getting ready to go on a spontaneous vacation, even though Clay has no idea what's going on. Wait, are you, are you packing? And as she's packing, Clay asks her, why today of all days? And Amanda is like, well, I went over by this window and I saw people living their lives being happy. And then I remembered how the world really is. And I came to the conclusion. I fucking hate people. So as they're driving out to the house they rented, we see that they have two kids, their son Archie and their daughter Rose. And when I tell you I hate this girl almost as much as I hate the end. They had little parts like this. Dad, when we get back to the city, can you take me to see the coffee shop and friends? That only serve the purpose of pissing you off when the movie ends. So they make it to the house and this movie is spread up into I think five parts. It doesn't matter until you read the last one. But they make it into the house and right away Amanda goes to the grocery store and picks up some things and here's where we get to see a little glimpse of Danny, played by Kevin Bacon. Yep, that's all we get for now. But Amanda gets back and Clay is like, Let's go to the beach! <laughs> and when they get to the beach, Rose sees a ship in the distance and says, Look at that boat. It's so big. But then it cuts to later in the day and she's still staring at the boat. It's getting closer. What is? A ship. It even cuts to later in the day and she's still staring at it. You okay, Rose? I think that ship is heading towards us. But it eventually gets close enough for everyone to panic and it crashes on shore. Nothing really happens other than people having to get out of the way and everyone just thinks it's a freak accident. Later that night though, when the kids are asleep, that's when we see that everyone's Wi-Fi connection is down, shown by Rose not being able to watch the final episode of Friends. While Amanda and Claire are playing Jenga downstairs, Amanda hears someone at the door and it turns out to be George and Ruth, the owner of the house and his daughter. And of course, because they're black, Amanda is very skeptical. No, I, I remember the name I just this is this is your house but they say the reason they stopped by was because there was a power outage in the city and they would have been stuck in traffic for hours and after reassuring Amanda that they are comparable to Obama and his daughter and giving them back half of what they paid to rent the place they agree to let them stay we didn't get our first sign that things aren't looking too good when Ruth turns on the TV and a national alert is playing on every channel <laughs> While in their respective rooms, Ruth and George start talking to each other like they know what's going on, and you're like, maybe Amanda was right to be skeptical. We need to get them out of here. We're not gonna do that by scaring them. They need to think everything's gonna be okay. The next morning, the first thing we're greeted with is the fucking child from hell complaining about how she didn't get to finish Friends. And even the mom is like, I know we're just acting, but shut the fuck up. Amanda then goes to check her phone and sees notifications saying hackers were the reason for the power outage. But then when she goes to show Clay, they're not there anymore. Well, doesn't say anything. What? was just there. And you would think this would get her suspicions off George and Ruth because this proves that they were telling the truth about the power outage. But nope, Amanda is like, I don't want to talk to you guys unless your grandparents could drink from the same water fountain as our, as mine. Clay, wanting to get away from his daughter, asking about why the TV doesn't fucking work, takes a little drive and notices that his GPS isn't working. While he's doing that, George is looking through his neighbor's house for a satellite phone, which ends up not working. While that's happening, Archie and Rose are in this shed that shows someone's been sleeping there and that they have a clear view of the house. Hey, isn't that the room you are sleeping in? 
We go back to Clay and as he's driving home, he sees this drone dropping red stuff and turns his car around to try to drive away from it, but eventually gets covered in whatever the drone was dropping. George is now at the beach that was next to the house and he goes out to see a plane crash landed on the beach, but not only that, another one is going to crash right into him. Back at the house, George doesn't want to scare his daughter as to why he's all wet, so he says he fell in a pool and she's like, alright, you fucking clumsy bitch. And then he turns to Amanda and gets serious and lets her know that the only reason the satellite phone wouldn't have work is if someone knocked out their satellites. Now the whole point of a satellite phone is that you always have a signal if you have a clear view of the sky, which I did. Only reason why it wouldn't work is if our satellites got knocked out of commission. And before they can even talk about it anymore, a loud noise starts to play that is heard by everyone. Where are my kids? <laughs> While Amanda, George, and Ruth are debating on what the hell that was, Clay comes back and shows them what the drone was dropping, and he shows them these flyers with Arabic writing on it. And by now, I was already invested, so I actually paused the movie and used Google Translate to see what this said. We ask you to pay immediate attention to what we say in this post. We have the most dangerous and destructive explosives in history, and we leave this horrific fact to you for you to ponder, and we stress the validity of it. I just want to use this bomb on your land, and steps must be taken to stop the resistance that have built to surrender your affliction. And then and when Archie sees it, he's like, oh yeah, I saw that in a video game before. I don't know what the rest of this means, but, but this part, it definitely means death to America. I remember from a game I was playing. And I'm like, death to America? I thought this was a cyber attack by the Chinese. Now the Middle East have tagged themselves in and are like, hey, we got something big planned, baby. And apparently George thinks the same is about to happen because right after that Tesla scene, he starts telling Amanda about how his one friend who's an elite member of society started acting all weird all of a sudden without saying why. And he doesn't laugh. And he always laughs, even with bad jokes. And all he said was, take care of yourself. And by now you would think even a child would be worried about what's going on. None of the electronics work. Mom and dad look like they just shit themselves. There are black people in our house. But no, this is what she's worried about. I'm never going to find out what happens to Ross and Rachel, am I? You're still on this shit. Who fuck? Everyone then calms down for the night until the deafening sound starts playing again, which brings us to the final chapter, the last one. And when everyone is in bed wondering why the hell everything is happening, Rose turns to Amanda and starts telling her about this one West Wing episode, and I know, the, even the mom is like, There's this story someone tells the president. You watched the West Wing? But she starts talking about this episode and how some guy dies and meets God, and it's some weird shit for a kid to be talking about when they don't even know what the fuck is going on. But Amanda asks her, what does all this mean? And she She's like, I think I'm done waiting. I would have been like, one less mouth to feed. In the morning, things go from bad to fucked because not only did retard Rose decide to leave without telling anyone, but Archie's teeth start falling out like nothing. Mm. What are you? And he mentions how he got bit by a bug and George is like, oh yeah, it could be Lyme disease. I've seen worse. And then Ruth and I are like, I've seen stranger symptoms. Stranger than this. While they're trying to think where they can get help from, Amanda mentions how she saw someone at the store getting all this survival equipment. And George is like, that has to be my neighbor Danny. He's always preparing for the end of the world. So Clay is like, well, my son is going to probably have to repopulate the world with your daughter. So let's go visit Danny and fix those teeth ASAP. But when they go to visit Danny, he's like, I tried to tell people, but they called me crazy. They said, you only like to dance. And I'm like, that was just for a movie. They'll never understand. Until eventually they get him to sell some medicine to them. And since he's a crazy conspiracy theorist, Clay shows him the Arabic flyer that was dropped, and he's like, yeah, I got a buddy down in San Diego that said the same thing happened, but it was in Korean. I heard from a friend of mine in San Diego about a similar event, drones dropping pamphlets, except they were in Korean. And this is where everything starts to unfold. George tells Clay about his friend that he was telling Amanda about, and how he was telling him that there was a three-stage plan that can topple any country's government. There was one program in particular that terrified my client the most. A simple three-stage maneuver that could topple a country's government from within. Done successfully, the third stage would happen on its own. What's the third stage? It's a war. And by now I'm like, holy balls. This movie is going to have one of those endings where everyone dies and life goes on. And my suspicions were only added to when back home, Amanda and Ruth decide to go try and look for Rose, only to see New York City being bombed like Will Smith didn't risk his life to save it. And then we see that it pans down to George's neighbor's house, who was briefly mentioned of having a bunker under his house that was built without the city knowing back when George and Clay were arguing with Danny. I suggest you try your neighbors. 
The Thorns, they did a basement conversion on the down low a while back, no permits and nothing, now you ask me? That's rich asshole talk for Doomsday Bunker. But we zoom into the house to find Rose hogging down food like there aren't fucking bombs going off in the distance. And look how she chugs the drink. I almost punched my screen when I saw that. But eventually somehow she finds the bunker and when she turns on the power, we see that this is a bunker that someone like Jeff Bezos or Bill Gates would have. I would say Elon Musk, but I feel like he would just try to leave to Mars if the world was ending and just die because technology hasn't gotten us that far yet. But she turns it on and we see this message playing on the screen saying the White House and other major cities are under attack, but she doesn't care and ends up by the DVDs. And what do you think she puts in the DVD player? That's right, friends, and plays the last one. And that is how it ends. They don't tell us about Amanda and Ruth, who are literally a couple miles away from the house where Rose is at. They don't tell us about what happened to Claire, George, or Archie, who just spent 15 fucking minutes arguing with Danny just to buy some medicine for his son's death, bruises his fucking teeth. I literally said, what the fuck was that out loud as the credits were playing? This movie started out slow and then reeled me in with the plane crashing and the death to America drone. And then they sealed the deal when George explained everything that was going on. But then, Right as I'm about to bust everywhere, they play the Friends theme song. I'm not kidding also, that is literally how it ends. If you go on the Netflix Instagram and click on this reel that they have, everyone is saying the ending was fucking booty. I saw one person trying to explain it by saying, the ending was a message that Rose cares more about being entertained rather than what's happening all around her, like all of us are doing right now. No shit she was. That was probably the most obvious thing in the movie other than George being black. Ruth does not represent society in this movie. Maybe she represents you and what you stand for, but I'm not gonna desert my family to watch TV after seeing and being a part of what's been going on over the past couple of days. And did you guys see the DVD she had to choose from? If we're going with sitcoms, give me Everybody Loves Raymond over Friends any day. Maybe the American Pie series if you have to go movies instead of TV shows. But Friends? <laughs> but yeah guys, that is how to ruin a good movie in under 5 seconds. See you guys Monday. Peace.